All right, we're gonna go over the plasma cutter today. This is gonna be one of two videos. We're gonna start by showing you where the plasma cutter gets stored. It's underneath the big bench in here, in our welding booth. And as you can see, uh, the cords are wrapped up and it's nicely tucked away in there. The cords aren't thrown in there. So you can wheel it out when you're ready to use it. Put it away when you're done. We have our power cord. So the plasma cutter is uh, a pretty remarkable piece of equipment. It uses electricity and compressed air. We don't have a fuel source, so we don't have to store uh, flammable tanks or anything like that. It's a very remarkable tool. And here is our, kind of like our on our welders, this is our, our torch. And we're just going to go over how to use it, and then you'll see some other videos on some of the internals and how to replace some of those and, and, and maintain and check those. Here's our grounding clamp, also wrapped up nicely. Our grounding clamp is not as long as our torch cord, and that's all right. We're going to take our grounding clamp and put it right on our plasma cutting and, and torch cutting table here. We need to uh, plug in our power supply, and we nicely have our, our uh, plug in for that right here. And this goes in and then you have to give it kind of a little eighth of an inch turn so it locks in and doesn't come falling out. All right, now I've got this table set up right here so uh, it's, it's kind of blocking the walkway here. If you're gonna do, be doing a lot of plasma cutting, it would be smart to take this and maybe bring it out so that you're not blocking the pathway here or limiting people from using some of the other equipment. Uh, other, other things we need to look at are protecting yourself. I've got an apron on so I keep sparks uh, off of me and, and not from burning my pants or my shirt. And uh, also my footwear is leather boots. Leather is the best for spark prevention. I saw two kids today that had the nylon shoes and the spark landed on their nylon shoe and then half a second later they were doing the, the hot foot dance. So um, just know that Leather boots are good, uh, and we also have some leather jacket and, and aprons and stuff that we can lay over your feet when you're using the torch, because you're you're basically going to be standing here and using the torch and spraying your feet don't with sparks. Be, don't be too proud to not put a second apron on over your legs or your feet if you're concerned. That's right. Uh, we need an air supply, and this doesn't need to be anything special with air. It's just regular compressed air from our, our air compressor. And uh, we have another one hanging here, but um, it doesn't have to be filtered or from one of the, the tanks like our oxyacetylene torch. Uh, we can just use compressed air. And then this, uh, can you see in the back there? In the back here, we just hook this right up like that. Now here's our on and off switch. Can you see that right? Um, yeah, okay on off switch. So I'm going to turn this on. And then did you hear that fan start running? Mm -hmm. That fan and uh, this machine, they have some computer boards in here where they're going to do a little self diagnostic. So if I were to take the torch off here, take this apart, I'm going to get a yellow light that shows up and it's going to say, oh, something's not right. Why isn't that coming off? There we go. There, my yellow light has turned on. And so that's going to tell the user and the operator, hey, something's not right with the machine. Double check everything, turn it off, and turn it back on. So now I reassemble my torch. The light still doesn't go out, and that's where I have to turn the breaker back on, or the, the on off switch in the back. Give it a couple seconds for that fan to turn off. and then turn it back on. And now we should have two green lights. Now the material thickness that I'm cutting here is, is pretty thin in comparison to what this machine can actually cut. I have no problem cut half inch plate steel with this. And right now we're, looks like we're cutting about 12 gauge. And so I've set this to uh, 25 amps uh, and it cuts it just fine. What we're gonna look at here, if we can get a nice dark backdrop, is the, the gun I have to flip the safety lever up and then I squeeze the red trigger. Just watch the fire come out of here.
you'll notice that hissing sound. That's just air going through the, the torque tip to cool it off. Just like our kind of our shielding gas on our welders kind of spurts out of there. And that is, uh, is normal. Now as far as setting the rest of this up goes, um, we've got a couple of designs here that were cut out earlier this morning. And I'm going to lay that out like that. And I'm going to use a straight edge as a guide to run my torch off so I have a nice straight line. I'm also going to add some more weight to this over here. And I have some clamps if I wanted to clamp something down to keep it from moving. Other point of safety are the helmets that we need to wear or the visors that we need to wear. Safety glasses like I'm wearing, we need to have these on whenever we're in the room. But we also want to make sure that we have a shade 5 protecting our eyes from this. Our welding masks, as you know, are a shade 10, and those are a little bit too dark for using this, and they're, they're overkill. Uh, you won't be able to see very well, so don't use these for plasma cutting. This is the style we want, and uh, again, with all of our visors, if you have a broken part on here, you need to tell your instructor so we can get this fixed right away. I just came across that busted one. Nobody told me. So um, let's get this. We're all set up here. I'm good to go there. I've got my power supply. Um, I've also, if you could pan over, I've got a five gallon bucket there uh, with filled with water. So when this is hot, I can take it over there and immediately douse it to cool it off. Got my cord set up. I'm ready to go. Now, I'm gonna sit this right here and I can put this right on the middle. It's direct contact. But if we're looking at it from a cross section here, I have this part up and down, but my actual handle for the torch is at an angle. A lot of you are going to want to hold it like that. We need you to hold the actual tip perpendicular to the surface so that we get a nice clean cut. All right, I'm bringing it right to the edge and I'm going to kind of start away from it so you can see what's happening, but you're going to see that initial fire that we already saw and then when it comes in contact with the steel and it being grounded, it's going to complete the circuit. I'm going to get a lot more fire come out of there to help cut the steel. All right. Good? Yeah. So the gun is now cooling itself off. I can just set this down. I can inspect my cut. This is a pretty good cut for not clamping this down and, and uh, actually some of the tips and stuff on here and the nozzles need to be replaced. But uh, this is pretty remarkable compared to using a handheld oxyacetylene torch. Now let's flip it over. We've got this junk right here and this junk we can call slag or dross and we want to chip that away using a hammer or another piece of steel. This stuff comes off real nice. You can see here it's been chipped off and here it's still stuck on there. It's not really welded, it can just come off real nice. And then I can take this over to a grinder and grind that uh, more smooth if I need to. Uh, when I'm done, I'm just going to wrap everything up, put all the uh, air compressor hose, back over in the corner hanging up there by the uh, storage room door and I'm going to tuck everything back away. This machine also leaves a lot of uh, steel gunk and debris on the floor so it's a good idea to just sweep that up um, and then uh, every once in a while we will take this grate off and clean out inside of here but that's like a once, once a semester thing so um, if it's your first time using this, you need to have an instructor check everything over before you actually pull the trigger. 
and uh, make sure that your metal is, is somewhat clean. Uh, we don't want to go and, and cut a lot of rusty metal or paint with this. Uh, it's not going to work as well. That's where we have other cutting tools for that. So stay tuned for the next video.